Welcome back. It's to watch in politics tonight, digging beyond the headlines. And now to our interview with the guest of the day. I am now joined by a political and development economist and member of the APC Presidential Campaign Council, Ayobami Oyalowo, on the lessons learned and takeaways from the 2023 elections. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Good evening. You are all right. As a member of the APC Campaign Council, how will you uh, assess outcome of the 2023 elections? Well, uh, we can take it from the presidential, and the outcome is uh, very glaring that uh, this is uh, probably the most competitive uh, election we've ever held since the return to democracy. Uh, in 1990, after the Abdul Salami led military hunter gave up power for a proper civilian rule, uh, we've always had um, an, an election where there is always maybe, uh, okay, let's say for instance, the first time we had the uh, AD and AP, uh, I think the AD, then the, the AD came together with uh, the a ANPP, then it was APP, to tam t I mean, tag team against the PDP. And then um, the difference was clear. And then we had uh, something similar in 2003 and 2007, and we've had it like that. But this time, it was a lot different, in the sense that we had not two front runners, but three uh, supposedly front runners. However, if we cast our mind back to 2015, when the opposition was going to dislodge the ruling PDP, then they came together. We had the C CPC led by President, now President Muhammadu Buhari, then General Muhammadu Buhari, and then the uh, ACN led by the uh, President elect now, Aswaju Bola Hakmet Tinubu. Then we had the NPP, and then we had, I think, a part of Afga. APGA, led by uh, then the former governor, Rochas Okorocha. So you see the difference in 2015 and 2023 is simple. The opposition came together in one voice as one body, and they were able to dislodge the ruling party. Unlike this current uh, election that we just ended, the opposition was fragmented. You had... Uh, the PDP presenting Atiku, you had the PDP light, uh, that's the Labour Party, then you had the other PDP, NPP, uh, the NNPP, all of them fragmented themselves into three different parts. So what we have learned is that an opposition that intends to dislodge a, a, a ruling party will have to come together and be, unit, uh, be, be in unity. However, what worked for the ruling party is the fact that the party was united, while for the opposition it was about self-aggrandizement. Everybody wants to be president. For the one who is a career uh, contestant who just wants to contest, he's been contesting since 1992. Then for the one who thinks it is, uh, he just has to do it and then we have to use religion and everything. So it was a, it was a, a, a different ball game from 2023 to 2020. I mean, from 2020, 15, 2023. There was unity with the opposition, unlike this time there was disunity. In fact, in the PDP, you had the G5 also refusing to support their candidate because of what they term his uh, over, overbearing attitude and probably maybe they felt it was also disrespectful to them. The, that is their problem. I really can't say for them what was the issue. But the issue is that five key governors refused to support their candidate. So the opposition was fragmented. They were not united, so there was no way they were going to dislodge the ruling party led by Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tidubu as the candidate who has now been graciously elected as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, elect, waiting for uh, uh, to be sworn in come May 29. So that is the difference. Those are the key. The key is unity to remove an opposition party, not fragmentation of different uh, of, of the same party using different names and uh, uh, um, uh, different name and appellations to fight for a battle that they could have fought together. Now they are coming together to give joint press conference to heat up the polity and to create unnecessary problem. 
something they could have done as one to win. They are now doing it as one to destroy the country because they have lost election, which is quite unfortunate because uh, I believe the spirit of sportsmanship should kick in in an election. You must understand that somebody will win, others will lose, and the losers should accept their fate. And if they don't want to accept their fate, there are channels to which you can channel your, your energy, which is go through the legal route. Unlike going around hopping from one TV station to the other, making incendiary statements, creating unnecessary hoopla, and trying to burn down the country. I don't think anybody needs that at this time. And then some other lessons we, can, we have also learned in this election has been the use of the beavers. The use of the beavers means it was easy to uh, accredit people and then to inflate votes becomes almost impossible. Unlike what we used to have before where some strong men sit in one room and write whatever they think should be the result. That also was uh, proven uh, yesterday when they, when they finally released the election result for uh, the governorship election in uh, Abia State. You, you realize that it's somewhere Ungwa, I really don't know how to pronounce it. They, they went to write very unnecessarily high figures. Clearly, the beavers proved that such kind of accreditation was not done. So with the beavers, it helps to reduce uh, uh, inflation of votes because if you cannot account for the number through accreditation, you cannot present such unnecessarily high number. It clearly will uh, prove that you have cheated in the election. So a lot of lessons to be learned. And I believe some of the problems that we, we face, INEC must have noticed this and begin to put that in, in their own uh, records so that they will look at those areas where there were failures and then they can work on it and um, we can continue to improve. Or, 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 of course, you cannot have a perfect election, but you can always improve from time to time. From the ordinary card reader now, we have the beavers, which is m an improvement on what the card reader was supposed to be doing then. So we, we are, we, we, in, 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 by and large, what we have had now is what you would call a more uh, credible and fairer process than we even had in 2015. All right, uh, Mr. Yolawo, you have made a very valid point. And also in your submission, you have called uh, the 2023 uh, election uh, the most uh, competitive, which, of course, many uh, share the same sentiments with you. But what will you link Ashwaju's victory to? Well, I have said Ashwaju's victory was uh, clearly a result of uh, unity in the ruling party. While the opposition was fragmented, Aswaju had a united front. You could see all the 20 or is it 22 APC governors pulling along with him. You remember in the course of this election, we had the cash issue uh, deliberately orchestrated by the uh, CBN governor to create unnecessary problem. Up to now, I, I still have problem today. When I was told I was coming here, I realized I didn't have enough fuel in my car. I had to go to a filling station, get there. I didn't have cash. The POS was not working. It was a mess today before I could finally get to uh, purchase for it. So this problem was deliberately orchestrated. However, what helped the APC was that Asiwaju had the support of the APC governors, especially the northern governors who rallied around him, led by Nasser Erufai, the governor of uh, uh, Kaduna State, and the governor of Kano State, uh, 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 Dr. Omar Ganduje. These men and other men such as the governor of Kebi, who was always in, the, in, in tow with Asuaju, these men came together and decided that, look, it is time for the South to produce a president when the North has had its own eight years. And such unity is the strength upon which the uh, presidential fulcrum of Asuaju's dream was built. They saw the dream, they renewed hope, and they believe in him. So APC was able to win this election because... It went into the election as a unified front. Unlike the PDP, I, I keep bringing back 2015 because you can always draw these lessons. In 2015, you had the NPDP broke away. In fact, when I was talking about the people that came, made up the APC, I actually forgot about the NPDP. They had seven governors who were angry, but five of them pulled out, two remained in the party, and they came and joined the APC. So what the APC really, really gained in this election is the fact that they learned from what the PDP did in 2015 by, by remaining a united and a, a strong unit. So Aswaju all is winning, one, to the strength of his campaign. 
His manifesto was the best. It was un unquestionably the only manifesto in this election. Others were just trying to say, okay, we too did the manifesto. So he had a, a, a very, very strong and powerful manifesto. He also had a, a very viable uh, members in the party who helped him, especially the APC governors. So the things that will have created problems for Asuaju had been dealt with in the sense that we had unity. Yes, we had some challenges here and there when there was, uh, there was fuel scarcity, there was cash crunch and all those things. However, people begin to realize that these things were orchestrated by the opposition and some enemies of progress of Asiwaju, and people saw beyond it. In fact, a musician went ahead to sing, even when there is cash or there is no cash, we will still support him. So clearly, Asiwaju had the unity, I mean, the, the, the support of his party members, the support of his governors, and then the trust of the uh, majority of Nigerians who went to the polls, because uh, some six million gave their vote to uh, the perennial contestants, some six million gave their own to the one who thought it was about religion, and then over 8.7 million gave their vote to the man who gave them, who promised to give a renewed hope. So Asuaju won this election clearly on the strength of his campaign, on the strength of unity in his party, and on the strength of, this, of, of the power of his messaging to the Nigerians and to those who went to the polls to vote. Now, let's talk about surprises. Uh, how shocked were you about APC's loss of Lagos State in the presidential election? <laughs> yeah, I, I was shocked initially. Uh, but eventually, I, many of us decided to find out what happened. I am not going to tell you on air what we discovered, but we noticed what happened. We corrected both of it, most of it. And the result of that correction is what you saw on the... the 18th of March, where uh, we not only won back our Lagos, we won it convincingly. Yes, we were surprised, we were shocked, but we were not flummoxed because we knew some things happened, we saw it. I, I'm not going to say them on air because we, we, we want to, as Raju has said, let's make uh, peace, let's let there be healing. Even though some people are doing everything they can to burn down the country, we will not join them. We don't have another country. We are not uh, sore losers. We lost Lagos. We took it. I remember Asuaju actually said he took it in good faith. So who are, who are we not to uh, support his uh, thinking? So yes, we knew what happened, but we have taken it on our stride. I mean, in our stride, and we corrected the ones we could, and the result uh, is self-evident on the 18th of March, where we not only won, we won by a very huge margin. That even if we dashed them, the result they had twice, they still would not have caught up with the APC. Hello, well, I, I'm, as a friend of the house, I'm surprised uh, as to why you do not want to share those findings with me. But then, I remember days before the governorship yeah. <laughs> election, the national youth leader of your party, Dio Israel, was here on the show. And he said to me that the party uh, chieftains and leaders will listen more. Was that reflective of what we saw at the governorship uh, election? Well, uh, Dayo is my Aburo, so I, I'm not going to agree. I'm not, I'm not going to disagree with Dayo. Like I said, we discovered what the issues were. We corrected them in-house. You see, in a, a, why we don't want to use war uh, example, but election, you, you can use warfare as an example. In a war, the generals don't disclose their strategy in public. We discover what the issues were, I can assure you, and we worked on it, and you can see the result is self-evident, I mean, evident on what happened uh, just last Saturday. Please don't, don't make me say this. I don't want to say. We don't want to put out everything here in the public place. What is more important is that our Mr. Selebul, our working governor, Soho Lu, has been able to get back his, his second term to continue with the good work he's been doing, uh, to continue with the project he's been doing. You too, you can see. The moment he was declared, the man did not sit down. On Monday, he was out there in the field supervising projects, and all and all. And by Sunday, I think Sunday or Monday, the promise he made to increase workers' salary by 20%, instantly he signed and that was that. So that tells you that we knew we were going to win because we had corrected the lapses we saw uh, on the uh, February election, 25th of February election. We saw the mistakes and we corrected them. And uh, we are glad that we were able to do that. And then um, I can assure you, such mistakes will never occur again, God willing. Uh, what other results shocked you during the presidential election? 
Uh, the one that also shocked me was we losing Casino State, uh, the state of the president. Uh, it was shocking. That's in the presidential election. And then losing uh, uh, Kaduna State was also shocking because I am aware that my brother there, Malam Nasir Rufai, has not just been a governor, he's been probably one of the best administrators we've had in Nigeria in the last uh, two decades. Uh, this is not praising him. I hope he's not listening so that his head, is not, his head will not be swollen. But sincerely, that man has been beyond uh, belief in, in terms of his administrative competence and uh, the way he has grown Kaduna from just another state to one of the best states in terms of IGR, in terms of fiscal development. You need to visit Kaduna honestly to understand what I'm saying. If you have been to Kaduna four years ago, you will not know your way in Kaduna today. You are going to get lost except you are, you are led properly. So that is the measure of demand. So I was surprised we lost Kaduna. I was also surprised we lost, uh, uh, I don't want to say I'm surprised we lost Nasara because of our national chairman, even though that's the state, but we still lost the state. Uh, but clearly, the two states that shocked me, apart from Lagos, is Kaduna and, and uh, Kasida, because uh, those are something that you couldn't have thought about. That is why I keep laughing when some people go around j jumping and screaming that uh, the elections were rigged. You are going to rig election, then you will rig it in your stronghold. So where were the elections rigged? Except the person shouting the election was rigged got 90% in his home state. We never got 90% in our home, home state. And we are not the ones screaming rigging. I mean, you know you won't win an election, but let's create enough problem so that you can burn down the country after you have lost. I said this in one television station. I said some of the polls they are giving, they were not scientific because I am a, I'm a, I'm a research student. And I understand why you are doing a poll. There must be methodology. There must be a sampling system that you will use. These guys sat down in a room and they keep writing funny results and call it uh, polls. And I said the reason why they are doing these polls you will see it after the election. When they have lost, they will use that as an excuse to try to burn down the country. And like a prophet, they, I can see that what I said then is coming to pass. They are deliberately going around creating unnecessary problems, screaming they won an election that they knew they never won, but they just want to look for enough reason to delegitimize the, the, this victory of Ashwaju and also to, if possible, burn down Nigeria if they can. But I hope the uh, security uh, service and the people in charge are seeing this and they will do what they need to do to curb this madness before it consumes all of us. Election, for me, is like a sport. Somebody wins, someone loses. If you lose, you go back and strategize, and you try to win again next time. You don't try to burn down the house because you couldn't catch a rat. Because when you burn down the house, you have nowhere to sleep in the night after you have killed the rat. So I, I, don't, I, I don't see any reason why we can't move on. We have won the election, they have lost, but we have stretched our hand of fellowship. If they refuse to accept it, they should go to court, which is the right thing to do. Not every day going on TV, making incendiary comments and trying to burn down the country. Nobody will live in a state of war. We don't want it. We have seen it in our neighboring countries. Nobody. You can only start it. You don't know who will end it. So I, I hope uh, sense and reasoning will prevail over this uh, unnecessary uh, that is being displayed everywhere. Nobody wants it. Nobody needs it. And if you believe that you have been cheated, go to court, show the evidence, show your proof, and win your case. But if you, if you have been to, co to court, you're already in court, and you're still going around creating problems, it tells you clearly that you know you have no case. So you just, want, you just went to court to satisfy your base, and then the next thing you want to do is create problems for the whole country. We don't need that. Nigeria doesn't need that. We have an economy to revive. We have a country to, to grow. We have infrastructure to build. We have jobs to create for the young people. No, our young people should never be used as cannon fodder for somebody else's ambition. I pray the young people can see clearly beyond the facade that somebody will... No, look, this messianic concept is a very unintelligent concept. No messiah is coming to save Nigeria. Nigerians will be saved by our planning, by our, 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 our collective effort of building a country. Nobody should think without him there will be no country. A country will be built by the entire entirety of the people working together, pulling in the same direction to build that country. So that is what I want to I want to pass as a message to our people, especially our young people, whom these people have been trying to goad into going on the street and getting themselves killed unnecessarily. It is unfair to use young people to fight for your personal ambition, knowing fully well that you didn't win an election, you have gone to court, and then if you believe that you have a case, let the court adjudicate. That's how it should be.
All right, Mr. Yolowo, uh, ABC lost uh, 12 states during the presidential election, but did much better in the governorship election. What did the party do differently to achieve a better outing in the governorship election? Was it better campaign strategy? Was it better communication techniques or mobilization? Well, it's not a very difficult thing to, to find out. I'll tell you one thing. If you go to Lagos, for instance, why did we lose in Lagos? We lost in Lagos because one, ethnicity became uh, the claim. One candidate went to Lagos. He didn't go to anywhere. He kept going to where people of his tribe were to rile up ethnic problem. Then, if you also come to Abuja, I can mention two churches, even though I don't want to give them uh, unnecessary uh, 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 publicity. These people, even after the election has been lost, they are still going on their pulpit, raining courses every day, pretending to be assistant of God that they are talking about God, they have given fake prophecy, the prophecy has failed. So these religious things affected us. They used the Muslim Muslim ticket to, 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 to beat the APC. However, for a few people that I could, I could speak with, I spoke to them clearly. And let me tell you what I said to a few people. I said, look, they've been shouting Muslim Muslim ticket. Fortunately, you are, you are a Lagosian like me. I was in Lagos when Asiwaju was the governor. Did Asiwaju ever at one time used his religious belief as a Muslim to oppress with the Christians for once, once, just mention once, nobody could give an example. And I also reminded them that even the, in the state house, Marina, who built the chapel for Christians there, it was Asiwaju. Therefore, it was clear that this religious uh, noise about Asiwaju was an unfounded noise. So what happened in the presidential election was one, Religious politics took precedence over what I would call common sense politics because many people that voted voted then because they were angry that we, we had a president who is supposedly a Muslim and a vice president who is also a Muslim and then they didn't like that. But when it came to the governorship election, it was a different dynamics. For instance, Governor Saul in Lagos is a Christian. His deputy is a Muslim, so you can't use a religious uh, politics there. So clearly people who would not have voted for Ashwaju because maybe they thought they were fighting for their religious belief. No need, they didn't need that again. And then if you also go to other states like, uh, a state like, uh, let me say, uh, I want to remember which of the states we also lost in the election. Most of those are, are local issues. So the, it is no longer about the president, it's about a local issue. So for instance, a Benue state, for instance, people are tired of governors telling them stories, not paying their salaries, looking for excuse of full and here, not full and there, there, making reasons not to just pay salaries and punish the citizens. They finally voted for a man they believe is going to liberate them in, 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 from the shackles of wicked leaders. So those are local issues that also facilitated the difference in what happened on the 25th of February from what happened in the, on the 18th of March. People had a different mindset. Like I said, I think Nigerians are becoming more sophisticated in terms of voting. People no longer vote just on party. They vote based on so many other parameters. I don't like this person. He's from my tribe. He's my religious man. I was in church before the presidential election, and somebody was supposed to lead a prayer. And the person was leading a prayer, and if I wasn't mature enough, I would have walked out before the service finished. So those are some of the challenges we had to contend with before the presidential election. However, those things no longer matter in the, pre in, the, in the governorship election because in all the states, if it was a predominantly Muslim state, they don't care whether it was Muslim, Muslim. If it was a predominantly Christian state, they don't care if it was Christian, Christian. And if it was a state that was shared, most of them had a president, I mean a governor who was a Christian and a deputy who was a Muslim or vice versa. So those things that they used to beat Ashwaju as stick was not necessarily used in the governorship election because the dynamics were completely different. All right, Mr. Yalowo, when we come back after this break, we will take a look at INEC uh, performance in the 2023 elections and more lessons and takeaways from the entire election. But before then, let's take this break and I'll be right back.